Hey guys, how's it going? It is a gorgeous, gorgeous afternoon out. The weather is beautiful. It's been so windy out. It's been kind of crazy. And then my sister is here, my sister Kailani. She's staying with us for a couple days. She flew up and we're gonna go to a pumpkin patch and we're gonna just kind of hang out and um, we'll film a little something together probably a little later in the week. You guys will see it possibly next week. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna go to the pumpkin patch with Jalen and Kailani and then she'll have an update for you guys on how the beginning of her surgery went and what the next step is. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's gonna be a good week and it's already been, uh, an exciting weekend and I'm really excited to go to the pumpkin patch. It's kind of one of my favorite things to do. So last week, um, we did five videos and last week I was in Los Angeles and that was just it was the best time ever. It was so much fun. Um, traffic was absolutely insane. It's not for me, but it was a really good time. So last week's videos were, did the baby stay on the ground um, for the Q&A? And then I did a plant shopping in Los Angeles and a garden tour with my friend Chai Ming. And then the I got invited to a YouTube event, which was so much fun. First day back in the garden. And then uh, I really thought that I wasn't going to like it, planting an azalea and I really did not think I was gonna like it, and I do like it. <laughs> so it was a very, very busy week. It was a big travel week, and um, I, I actually took a day and just rested. It was really nice. So let's get into it. I think this is gonna be probably the shortest Q&A that I've ever done. There was very few questions this week, which was, um, it's actually kind of nice because my sister is here. She's sleeping right now. Uh, she just had first surgery done and uh, she's like resting. She literally had it done yesterday and she came up here, flew up and is just crashing hard. <laughs> so um, this means that I will get this done quick and then I can go make sure that she's still taken care of. So first video was the, do the baby stay on the ground and my hand care routine. Um, and we had that update of the baby birds. They did not make it. Brent has since poured a concrete slab. You guys will see that this week and um, it's gonna be so much better for them. So th yeah, it's just gonna be a lot safer. We're not gonna deal with mice. We've already got some like mice traps out and we've caught a few mice. We're, we're doing these like humane traps where the mice can like go in it. Um, yeah, and then we're releasing them very, very, very far away from our house because we don't want them here at all. Um, so mice are being totally taken care of. That is not gonna be an issue for us anymore, hopefully. Um, we're, we're pretty sure that that's what got the baby birds and um, yeah, so just an update on that. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Actually, before we get into this video, I wanted to say that you guys saw an extra video last week and I'm not going to be pulling any questions from it. It's the new series that I'm doing called Robbie Recommends and it's going to be a maybe a bi-weekly or every three weeks I'm going to upload a video on either a Saturday or a Sunday one of those two days and it's just gonna be a Robbie Recommends videos and I'm having a lot of fun doing them. It's just kind of products that I've found that I'm enjoying or products that I've been using for a very long time that I love or ones that have just shown up that I'm excited to start using. So new series, Robbie Recommends and um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'm filming this and it hasn't came out yet so I don't know, uh, I don't know your guys' reaction. So fingers crossed it was good. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not going to pull any questions from that because I, it hasn't happened. And by the time the Q&As come out, they just there's not enough time for me to pull questions and film and edit and all that. So yeah, I'll, I'll try to reply to comments on that one, I think. <laughs> First question on the Q&A from last week was from Love of June Bug, and they had said, what would you want your Hawaiian name to be? So my parents told me that my Hawaiian name was going to be Lapaka, and that was actually named after my uncle who lived in Hawaii, I believe it was. And so I've always kind of liked that one. And um, that, that's that's probably what I would want my Hawaiian name to be is Lapaka. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a weird name, but I, I do like it a lot. So if I had gotten to chose, choose my own name, I would have chosen a Hawaiian name. If you missed it last week, I am part Hawaiian. And so uh, my family's from Hawaii. My sister, her name is Kailani and uh, she has a Hawaiian name and most, I've got tons of family members with Hawaiian names and they all are very, they've got like darker skin and beautiful dark hair and I'm red. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, 
Vapaka, that'd be my name. <laughs> the next question on that video is from Ms. Maddox and they had said, hi Robbie, have you tried propagating the dichondrous overfalls from cuttings? They root so easily. I usually buy two plants and then spread the trailers across some potting mix or soil. Once they root, I clip the new plants from the mother plant and I have a new free plant. I have not done that just because, um, I don't know, I don't want to winter it over. It just seems like too much work this winter. I want a very mellow, easy winter where I'm just keeping, oh, did you see that bee? Where I'm just keeping a few little seedlings alive. That is my goal is to go very, very mild this year. Um, so I don't want to have to winter them over. But what I might do is try to do that very early in the spring and see if I can find them. And then I'll keep them in their nursery can and I will lay them over some potting soil because I've I've done it before in the past, um, but I, I just don't want to do it over the winter. But they root so quick. They root so easily. That's exactly what happened in my front window box is they had rooted across the entire surface of that area. And they do, they root really beautifully and they root, they're just a gorgeous plant. So next year, my plan is to just buy some and try to root them out very early in the spring. And the last question on that video is from Nita and she had said, I had asked if you could put something on the ground to keep the babies warm, but didn't see you answer that. So I will ask, can you pad the ground for them? Um, okay, so we did lose the babies and so, I mean, we're not worried about it right now, but next year when they start to have more babies very early in the springtime, I think that what we'll end up doing is we will, um, we'll go in with some like wood chips like we go in with the, for the chickens, but we'll go in with more like smaller fine shavings. So the ground is padded that way. So yeah, in the springtime we will pad it and then we'll make sure that it's not just like solid concrete because uh, they do like plop out of the nest. And so once we see that they started laying eggs and we start to hear the babies and before they come out of the nest, we'll make sure that there's a thick, thick padding, probably about two inches worth of padding. So that way when they flop out of the nest, they are safe. And the next video that we did was shopping in Los Angeles and a garden tour. And that was at my friend Chai Ming's house. And Chai Ming and I have become really, really good friends. We talk daily and we talk multiple times a day. We talk throughout the entire day usually. Um, and we talk, you know, like analytics and insight and YouTube and Instagram and all of the social media things and bounce ideas off of each other. And she's become a really good like soundboard for me and um, I hope vice versa also. And she's just, she's a wonderful person. And she let me uh, uh, steal an entire day away from her when I was down there. And we went and got breakfast and walked to the pier and I got to see the ocean. And um, we actually went to a little farmer's market down there and the farmer's markets are so expensive. It was kind of crazy. I was like in sticker shock because our farmer's markets up here are very, very affordable. Um, and it's probably because everything that's like at our local farmer's markets is grown right here. I think the farmer's markets down there, they have to be grown kind of a ways away and land down there is so expensive where land here is not expensive at all. So, um, it was a really good day. We had so much fun and it was just really nice to like be able to hang out with her again in person. The first question on that video is from Darlene and she had said, do you have a location for rolling greens? It would be a fun road trip. I love try I love Chai Ming's garden and all of her pets. Her pets are so sweet. So Rolling Greens has a couple locations, I guess. Uh, the one that we were at was in Culver City. There's one in Santa Monica and there's another one in Beverly Grove. I'm looking at Brent <laughs> and Studio City. Um, so I will put the address for the one that we went to in the description of this video down below and definitely worth it. It's very, very expensive but it was a really cool place. And uh, you do need to be able to do stairs because it is three levels tall. It's, a, it's on a hill. <laughs> and the only other question on that video was from Nita and she had said, how did you meet your friend? Love her garden. So Chai Ming and I, we met at Monrovia at that uh, camp that I got to, they called it Camp Monrovia. And we met there and we, instantly clicked. We were both sitting on the back of the bus together and uh, we just started chatting and um, I don't know, bouncing ideas off of each other while we were there and we had a lot of fun. And then after we left, we just kind of like continued to stay in contact and it was, it was a lot of fun. That's also how I met my friend Leslie, who I went and I did her garden tour. She's the landscape designer. She lives in like the Bay Area and I went and did her garden tour and two other gardens that she did. So that's how I met Chai Ming and Leslie. And um, yeah, both great women. And I'm very glad that I got to meet them on that Monrovia trip. We had a really, really good time.
The next video that we did was I got invited to a private YouTube event at the Holiday House. Holy cow. That was a event that I will remember forever. I mean, every event that I've gone to, I will definitely remember forever. But that event was very, very well done. It was incredible. Um, the speakers they had, the activities they had us doing, um, the food that they had was absolutely amazing. If you are on other social media platforms, like if you're watching like TikTok, there's this grocery store in Los Angeles called Air Juan, and they're a very high-end, high luxury grocery store. Like I think I saw like, they sell like luxury ice cubes and it's like clear ice. So you put it in your drink and it doesn't even look like you have ice in it. And I think it was like four ice cubes. They're like ball shaped ice cubes and like they're big, but I think it was like 30 something dollars for ice cubes or something like that. So it is like a ridiculously expensive store. And when we first walked in, they had Air One smoothies and there's one called Haley. It's like the Haley Bieber smoothie. And it's like all over social media right now. And it's super popular. And I think it's like a, $18 or $28 smoothie or something like that. I think it's $18. And I'm um, not gonna lie, uh, that's the one that I got. It's like a pink one and it was so good. It was probably the best smoothie I've ever had in my entire life. So I kind of get why it's $18, but I don't know if I would ever like pay my own money to get an $18 smoothie. But it was really, really good. It was, I, I drank the entire thing. It was delicious. And then they had breakfast out for us and then we got to like mingle in the hallways with um, all of these other creators and I just kind of like threw myself out there. Usually I'm kind of like the awkward person. I just kind of like sit in the back and I'm like, okay, I'll just let everyone do their own thing. And this time I was like, you know what? I'm going to just talk to people. That's what I'm here for. Um, because most of the people there I knew were going to be like beauty influencers and fashion influencers and home influencers. And I was like, that is not me. I just, I just kick it in my garden. I was going mostly to learn from these people because I knew I was also going to be one of the like smaller accounts there. And I was like, I'm going to, I want to learn from them. I want to know what they're doing, how they grow, how they're growing and, uh, get the insight from YouTube also. And I learned so, so much. Um, but I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna throw myself out there. And so I just started talking to people as I like was standing next to somebody. I just brought up casual conversations and it was actually really cool because a lot of them told me that they didn't know anyone there and that they were also super nervous. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was cool. So it was, it was nice to hear that people who have like millions of people following them on social media were also nervous at this event. And so it was cool that I was able to kind of like break the barrier and I met three really amazing people who um, I became friends with while we were there. Actually, four people that I became like friends with. Okay, that was like five people that like we sat and we talked for hours. It was just, it was, it was a good event. I had so much fun and um, thank you to you guys for helping me grow this channel and making it so YouTube sees me and that I can go do cool things like this. First question on that video, it's more of like a comment and, and it's from Kay Bell and she had said, so you're moving to LA, huh? I can't imagine that traffic. No, thank you. The beginning had me laughing, so relatable. What an amazing opportunity for you. Congratulations and so glad you took us along. Uh, yeah, I will not be moving to LA and I would be good if I didn't go back for quite some time. I, I don't do good in traffic. If you missed it, um, <laughs> I had gone to go meet one of my friends. Her name is Candace, and she's over on Instagram as Blushing Garden. And she is getting ready to do like rip out her entire property, and it's all going to be uh, like a rose garden. And it's so so. It's gonna be it's gonna be chef's kiss. It's gonna be so good. Cannot wait to see it. Um, but I was gonna go meet her for dinner, and I was going. 14 miles. When I had initially checked it, it said it was going to take me 30 minutes to get there. And I was like, okay, cool. That's easy. I had checked it and I think it was like 11 o'clock at night when I had like initially like looked up the directions to where we were going to meet. And then um, we were going to meet at like 5.30, I believe it was. And I was getting ready to like leave the hotel. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave early traffic. I looked it up and it said an hour and 15 minutes to go 14 miles. I was like, what just happened? It more than doubled in the time. So yeah, I don't know how people plan for that. Like, is there, do you just know like certain times, certain roads are gonna be crazy? Or is it just like, you just have to prepare to always go an extra like 45 minutes early to everything just to be on time? I, do, I don't get it. It was wild to me. So no, I will never be moving to Los Angeles. <laughs> And the next question on that video is from Micker Snoopy and they had said, hi Robbie, I'm with you. I can't handle the traffic in LA. Did you 
And did you and Brent go to the event or just you? I'm so happy for you. You deserve many more wonderful things. You are so sweet. I went by myself. Um, initially, I was going to bring Brent. And then I was like, well, I don't know. If I go with Brent, I'll just sit. And Brent and I will both just like sit and talk with just each other the entire time. And I won't put myself out there and get out of my comfort zone. Um, one, because Brent is not a social person at all. He does not enjoy anything like that, meeting new people. And so I would be worried about him being uncomfortable the entire time. And then um, I also would just, I would just talk with him. So he decided to stay. He was probably much happier because he also does not like traffic. And so he stayed at home with the dogs had more peaceful evenings. He was mad that I was gone. He, he does not enjoy me being gone. But um, yeah, I, I went by myself and I did have a really, really good time. And the last question on that video is from Jan Emily and she had said, hey, you didn't show us all your swag. Okay, so I decided not to show the swag bags. Um, I didn't want it to feel like boasting and it felt really weird to me. I was, I was fully planning to like, do a video of like unboxing everything and I kind of decided not to um it just it just felt weird it felt like I was showing off and that's not who I am as a person I don't like that so I got an icky feeling as I was gonna do it I was gonna film it in the hotel room and I was like I can't do this I had everything laid out on the bed and I was like this just feels like too much to me so I decided not to. Um, there was a ton of stuff in there, a ton of good stuff. There was mostly makeup products and like skincare products and like beauty things. There was a couple fashion pieces. I got a couple like hoodies, which I love hoodies. You're gonna see me in the hoodies. Um, I got a blanket, which I love a good blanket. And we got a frying pan. And then most of the makeup went to Jalen. She came up and she's like, mine, 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 mine. And she took basically I mean, she took everything makeup related, a lot of the skincare stuff she took, and then um, there was some perfumes and she took all the perfumes. She is obsessed with perfume right now. I think there was one, um, there's, there was three that she really liked out of the four. And um, like these three she said are now her like top, top favorites. One is the one by Selena Gomez, her rare beauty one. One was the Coach, wild rose and then the third one was one from joe malone and it's the i think it's like a fig one or something like that and it, it was my favorite it smelled so good i'm gonna put the links to those three perfumes on there if you're a perfume person or a like a smell person highly recommend those three perfumes they were just top top tier perfumes they they were amazing um so jaylen took those and she said those were probably her favorite things that she got out of, out of the swag bag. So there was a lot of stuff. Um, like I said, I just felt a little uncomfortable sharing it. So I just didn't, cause I don't ever want anyone to feel like, well, oh, did, why didn't I get that? Or why can't I have that? Or anything like that. So it just, I don't know. Maybe if I go next year, tell me, tell me if you guys want to see that. Or if you don't want to see it, please tell me that because that just, oh, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. Mixed feelings. The next video that we did was first day back in the garden, garden tour-ish, <laughs> and it felt so good to be back here, and the weather was perfect. We had one random hot day, and then it's cooled right back down. Oh, I just got the shivers. Uh, the wind just blew. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's been so nice. It's been in like the 70s, and then we're cooling down in the evenings. What are we getting to in the evenings? We're getting down to 49 degrees. It was 80 degrees today. This is cold weather, guys. We have a couple days on the 10 day at 69 degrees. Wild. I'm gonna freeze. <laughs> okay, so, so if you don't know, I have terrible, terrible circulation. So um, my, my temperature range is about this big. I can really only handle a very small temperature range without being extremely uncomfortable. And so uh, if we get over like 80-ish, if we get over 85, I am really uncomfortable and I can just like sit here and I could be like pouring sweat and I, I can't even touch myself. I'm, I'm just hot and I'm very miserable. And then if we get under like 72, if we're in the seventies, um, I'm freezing cold to the touch. So it is currently, it says it's 80 degrees and um, we are in the shade and it is windy. But if you were to come here and like touch my hands, you'd be like, what is wrong with you? It's 80 degrees, why are you cold? My hands right now are freezing to like the point where they hurt. So I just have a really poor body circulation. 
Um, yeah, so so it, it's, it's been really nice that it's cooling down because I prefer to have uh, like cold hands than be hot. <laughs> I don't remember where I was even going with that, but it did rain. It was nice. It feels so good to be back to the garden. One random hot day, I will take it. First question on that video was from Jessica and she had said, do you worry about bringing bugs into your house when you bring in cut bouquets? Here in Ohio, we have stink bugs that hide out on our plants. Um, so we do have stink bugs here, but I don't worry about it. I mean, as they're going into my flower arrangements, I've got a pretty good eye of what's going in there. I don't know, as I'm harvesting them too, I'm pretty, I, it's really when I'm harvesting, I'm really looking for bugs. And there's been a few times, and for the most part, I'll just kind of knock them off. But I, I think there was one time that I brought in hydrangeas it was one time I brought in hydrangeas and uh, all of a sudden we kept hearing, I had it on a metal tray and we kept hearing tink, tink. And we're like, what is happening? And the hydrangea itself was full of snails, like little tiny snails. They were like this big and they dropped off and they would hit the metal tray. It was, it was really funny. So that's the only time that I've really brought bugs into the house was uh, with hydrangeas and they were just little snails it was actually really cute it was it was quite comical because it took us a few times to like figure out what that was the next question on that video is from pamela and she had said hi robbie what variety of arabian jasmine is that sorry about the babies thank you um that is the uh, summer soul arabian jasmine it's from monrovia and it is a gorgeous gorgeous jasmine I am in a zone 9A and I'm right on the cusp of it. I might have to do some like winter protection to make sure that it is um, like safe in the winter time because there's a good chance that some of them might die. Th this is a hot loving plant. It wants heat. It does not want any cold at all. It gets about eight feet tall and about four feet wide. So it's kind of more of like a shrub jasmine instead of like a climbing jasmine but we're training it to be more flat and to grow along the wall. It doesn't do like normal jasmine or uh, climbing plants where they want to like wrap around and grow. This one I have to train, otherwise it's just gonna grow into like a small shrub form. The next question on that video is from Michelle and she had said, I have to stop watching your channel. Every time I watch your channel, I order something. I want those Japanese anemones. I'm zone 9B Florida. How do you get them to thrive? I feel everything that is not rated for my zone dies in my garden. Okay, so I will say that Zone 9 California and Zone 9 Florida are two totally different worlds. I do not consider them same zones at all. Um, I grow a lot of things that are not in my growing zone, and I think it has to do with the fact that I'm in California. So if you are in Florida, you need to just take growing zone 9 with a grain of salt. You can grow pothos outside and a lot of like houseplants outside where I cannot grow those things at all year round outdoors. Um, so I, I don't I don't think that our zones are the same. I feel like um, I, I, I feel like the growing zone, the USDA growing zone is so outdated and it kind of does a disservice. It just tells you your cold that you could possibly get. And ours like we could get down to like a 28 degrees, which I don't even remember the last time we hit 28 degrees here. We, we usually hit about 30 degrees is like what we'll hit and we'll have one, maybe two nights at 30 degrees. We might hit 28 and that's like a rare, rare occurrence. And that was like the low and it might hit for like an hour at most. So we, I, I don't think we're the same growing zone. And I don't, I would never expect somebody in Florida to grow like they're in zone nine, California. It just is not the same at all. So. I don't know, I, I experiment with plants out of my growing zone because um, I know that they have a pretty good chance of survival here. If I was in Florida, um, it's a little bit hard because you guys, are, you guys are hot and humid and you guys don't get winters where we do get a partial winter. You, you go 30 minutes away from my house and you can be in snow. So it's, it's very tricky here. And so I don't have better advice for you except to just kind of experiment and don't maybe experiment with uh, expensive plants. Japanese anemones, you should be able to find them for 10 to $12 for a, a plant. And I feel like that's something that I would experiment with. The next question on that video is from Connie and she had said, where are you getting the tape you use for your flower arrangements? I've looked everywhere. I have one in the mahogany splendor and love it. I use it all the time for my arrangements. So in that video, everything is actually linked in the description down below. I'm trying to be really, really good about that. And so, um, 
from now on, any little product that you guys see in my videos, I'm trying to make sure I link just to answer you guys' questions before they become a question. So always check that description box, um, hit the more button, and then you have to hit more one more time. And all of the links should show up for anything used in that in the um, video. I even linked the white vase that was in that video. So I will link it again in this. I got it from Amazon and um, it's the best floral tape and it's just it's easy to use you have to make sure though that your vase is dry if your vase is wet it won't stick this tape doesn't stick to wet things so make sure that your vase is nice and dry and you'll be good to go and the last question on that video was from vicky's garden evolution and she had said whoa that faucet is so beautiful i'm sorry about the baby finches are you saying mice or mites killed them also i thought i would mention i've been thinking about putting in a deep gravel bed around the perimeter of my house and I've read that it keeps out mice. So maybe the issue isn't the gravel base, but maybe it needs to be deeper gravel so they can't come through. Or perhaps the gravel base inside and around the perimeter. I'm no expert, but I just thought I would throw that out there. <laughs> so we actually deal with mice coming into our house also. We're getting real personal here. Um, and we have gravel surrounding the entire house. And so I don't think that the gravel is the issue. Also, sorry about the sirens. Um, so I don't think the gravel is the issue and the gravel that we had inside the aviary was probably about four to six inches deep, right? It was pretty deep. And so I don't think that was the issue. Um, I just think that they could go right through it. Our ground here is so soft so they could go underneath. They could easily get in. So we just decided to do the cement because it's just going to instantly solve the issue. No problems at all with that. And then um, it is mice. It's not mites. Mites. It's mice that are the problem, not mites. So, um, yeah, mice, little, little baby mice, and they're so cute, and they're such a pain. And um, because a lot of you guys, or a few of you had commented this also, mice are omnivores, so they will eat anything and everything. They don't care if it's alive or not, um, which was, it was kind of surprising when we first moved here. We didn't realize that. And yeah, so also chickens. Chickens are also omnivores. They will also eat anything and everything. They do eat mice also. We know because we found a mouse in the chicken coop one time and then we saw the chickens chasing it, and then we did not see a mice. Yeah. And the last video that we did was, I really thought I wasn't going to like it, planting an azalea, and I really wasn't sure about it, and I'm still not 100% sure about it, but I do really like it. So we will see how it goes. Um, I am excited to see an azalea that's gonna bloom and continue to bloom. Also, ignore the sounds. <laughs> Somebody's doing yard work. <laughs> Um, and so I'm excited to see it bloom and see it do some things. I think, um, I think it'll be exciting to have one that just blooms year round or multiple times during the year. Most azaleas just bloom once and then they're done. And it's a big show and they're really pretty when they are blooming. Um, but I just need something that's going to bloom for a much, much longer period of time. So this one is a more compact and more blooms. So. We'll see. Brent likes it. <laughs> First question on that video is from Yolanda and she had said, hi from Reading again. Question about the clematis. What do you know about the roots? I'm trying to find something to go in front of this big blank wall next to our front walk. It's the wall of the garage, but I know my husband will freak out if he thinks the roots will compromise the foundation. We're on a slab if that matters. Okay, so I've planted a ton of things around the foundation of our property. We're on a raised foundation and um at our old house i did plant things right up against the house also and we were on a slab foundation and there are just certain things that i probably would never plant like trees i would never plant a big tree up against a house um we have a small growing tree one that i think gets like eight feet tall or something like that it stays very compact and so i know the roots on it aren't going to get absolutely massive it's a, a saguaro cypress or a lawson cypress gorgeous tree but I know the roots aren't going to absolutely take over so I'm not worried about it the clematis I don't see it having super crazy aggressive roots um, not anything that should be able to destroy a concrete slab or pipes or anything like that it's not like a willow tree that has aggressive roots or any type of like big tree I probably wouldn't like plant like a shrub or something like that against your foundation but that clematis it's I mean the stem on it right now it's you see how big it is the the stem the main stem is about this thick so it's very very small stem it's not big at all i, I don't worry about it um if your husband is gonna freak out about it just i don't know maybe you could find some wall art 
I mean, if, it, if it's something that he's going to figure out about, I would try to just maybe just find three trellises and get um, like some big containers. Maybe you could get like a horse, horse trough size containers, big, huge ones, and then you can plant in that and have that go up a trellis. And then it's not in the foundation at all. That's probably what I would do. If I, if I was married to somebody who was worried about the foundation, but I fully listen to them, maybe. <laughs> but also, maybe compromise and just just go with a planter. But the clematis is beautiful and they do great in our area. Um, but also, you wanna make sure if you're gonna plant that clematis that it needs to be in an area that is not full, full sun. This, this area that it's at, I think it's like three hours of full sun. Um, and sometimes some of the leaves on it do burn. So, and it also gets like dappled sun. For part of the day so it's not like a it, i wouldn't plant it south facing with like the cement and a hot wall it would probably cook so just a warning on that and the last question for the week is from asha and they had said i avoid so many pretty plants because they are toxic to dogs including azaleas i see many youtube gardeners with dogs that never think twice about planting anything they want without considering toxicity levels is this not a worry for you it is not a worry for me. My dogs do not eat my plants. They don't lick my plants. They don't chew on them. Um, so I'm not worried about it at all. If I had a dog who chewed on plants, I would definitely be more concerned about it. Freya and Sadie are not interested in my plants at all. Um, I mean, the, the plants are not toxic if they're just sitting there. They're more toxic if you eat them. Um, and then there's toxic which will just kind of make you sick and then there's poisonous so there's also that level we also have things that are definitely poisonous on our property and i'm not worried about them at all so i think you just have to do what's best for your animals on your property and if you do deal with animals that like eat your plants my mom used to have cats that would gnaw on the ends of her plants and so she would be more concerned about what she brought inside as house plants because she didn't want her cats to get sick so she kept it to a very small list of houseplants that she had. So you gotta do what's best for your animals. If you see your animals don't eat your current plants, you probably don't need to worry about it. That's my advice, that's what I would do. I don't worry about it, my dogs, they ignore everything, except people. They don't like when they can see other people peeking over the fence, like the neighbors. <laughs> that makes it sound like my neighbors peep over the fence. We don't have peeping toms, <laughs> they just, our house sits lower than everyone else's house around us and uh these neighbors right here have like sheds and sometimes they're like working on the roof of the shed or doing things and freya does not like that <laughs> i don't have creepy neighbors <laughs> so that is going to be it for this video you guys i hope that you enjoyed it that is not my rooster and i will see you all in the next video bye guys mm -hmm.